Uh, into the studio is Walt Lloyd Figgins, uh, who is an expert in risk mitigation, specialising in providing risk management solutions for those working or travelling to remote and hostile environments. And obviously you'll know Lloyd from the show before because he's been an excellent paper reviewer for us. But he's written a book called Looking for Lemons, which is a travel survival guide sharing some of his more colourful adventures and how to improve the odds of avoiding danger um, and, and, and what can possibly go wrong when you're abroad. The book covers everything from aircraft, vehicle, marine and accommodation safety through to what do you do if you're caught up in a natural disaster or a terrorist attack. Uh, cheerful stuff, Lloyd. Well, I try, I try, I try Will. Um, but actually, you know, uh, some of the reviews on it actually refer to the humour in it because yes. I, I've tried, you know, it could be a really stiff subject and, and what I've done is I've injected some of my personal anecdotes uh, yeah and and you know it's not to say that that travel is inherently dangerous is not you know statistically it's, it, it's pretty safe but when things go wrong they often go wrong pretty badly so the whole idea is to get people out there to enjoy travel for whatever reason whether that's business whether it's a gap year or whether they're just on holiday mm. um, and just to be aware of what those dangers are how to mitigate them so that you go away you come back you've had a great trip and you've you've remained safe throughout what typically goes wrong on a holiday so so i mean obviously you 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 were in the army you were then worked in in the police you then took people on sort of extreme holidays as as a guide so you were kind of looking for trouble but most of us aren't what 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 sort of trouble do do the general public tend to get themselves into and how is it avoidable statistically the top things are vehicle accidents so oh. if we have a look at vehicle accidents the world health organization's latest figures on that 1.2 million people a year are killed on roads you know globally mm. um so when we look at things that tourists or travelers need to watch out for it is vehicle accidents uh, the next thing is sort of scams that you know just so varied all over the world different types of scams but actually you know the Royal Geographical Society did some 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 research on on injuries overseas and and actually the thing that gets most of us 31 percent will suffer some sort of gastrointestinal uh, illness whilst yes. overseas so the deli belly side of things yeah so in the book I cover the vehicles I cover the medical issues I, I you know share the story of when I caught malaria in Tanzania as as a you know quite an extreme example of that but the sort of things that you can do the little things that you can do that are actually going to make a real difference to your to your travel you know, yeah. enjoyment but how do you avoid Delhi belly i mean you know is, isn't it just part of going to india that you get a dose of the runs yeah no, it, it, it's really pretty avoidable to be honest with you so it's just taking those little things you know the, the drink sp- bottled water bottled water the hand sanitizer making sure that you wash your hands after you've been to the toilet before you handle food and one of the key things yeah, but, you, but if you're in a restaurant you can't you yeah, can't you well, can't guarantee that no the, you can't the cook has done no, the same you, sort you, of thing. you can't but you know one of the things that um that is a real cause of deli belly is buffets because often it's leftover food, it, it, it's it's been rewarmed or it's not been cooked back up to the right yeah. temperature. So when you look at hotels, they often lay on, you know, buffets. Avoid buffets. Try to make sure that you're you're eating food that sometimes you know when you're overseas you can actually see it being cooked. Yes. Um, and and you know looking at those little things can make the big difference. What about street food? Street food is a real problem because I mean particularly you know I go to I've travelled to Thailand quite a few times and you go you arrive in Bangkok and all the tourists head down the Khao San Road and there's all those street stalls. Some there. bits amazing. And and it is amazing. It, it is. But you know it it's one of those things. I you know I'm. I'm not immune to this stuff. I've, yeah. <laughs> I've had, you know, loads of gastrointestinal problems. But the fact of the matter is, you, you, you know, you are taking a risk when you're doing those things. But I, I agree with you. Street food is, is generally very good, but there's a downside to it. So you're a high-risk guy. Who's the booked book aimed at is it is it a book a book aimed at the more adventurous among us no it's not i've, I've specifically tailored it so it, it will suit the business traveler the holiday maker and you know the gap year traveler um and i've had a lot of response from um gap year people yes. you know younger people or actually parents of, of of young people going away who are worried about you know their 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 their, their their, their, their offspring go in travelling and so they've bought this book for them and actually it's the younger people who have gone wow this is amazing because this guy's gone off, he's, he's had all these adventures he's come back, he's told us about them and he's actually given us all so the tips are, to stay safe. Well exactly, if you are going to go off the beaten track, so if you are a young backpacker and you want to, you know, you want to explore life a bit and you don't want to go to all the normal 
the tourist destinations and you're in South America or you're in India or in Africa mm. or somewhere, wherever it might be. Um, what, what are, what are the, the absolute sort of hard and fast rules you must follow to mitigate your risk? OK, preparation is the first thing. Do your research, find out exactly where you're going, find out what the latest scams are there and then do your preparation with regards to your accommodation, particularly that first night's accommodation when you arrive in a strange place. Mm. You know, there's something that we teach on hostile environment courses which is called situational awareness. Now, anybody can learn situational awareness. The problem is, is that a lot of people now walk around with their face in their phone. They have no idea what's going on around them. Yeah. The bad people are looking out for people like that because yeah. they're an easy target. Yeah. So don't make yourself a soft target. Be aware of your situation, be aware of your surroundings, and always have a plan in place for what you're going to do if it goes wrong. Know where your safe havens are, things like police stations, where your hotel is, and how are you going to get there if something does go wrong. And travel with a buddy or travel alone is fine? Yeah, I think traveling with a buddy is is great, you know, but it's one of those things that the, the, the more you travel, the more experience you get, and the more exposure to these sorts of situations, the wiser you become. So okay. I, w- I would say when you first start traveling, it's best to go with a buddy. But then as you as you develop your skills, your situa- situational awareness skills, then, you know, you, I think you're, you're pretty all right to sort of go on your own. But make sure you don't let your guard down. So many times we see people who are experienced travelers, something bad happens to them because they become complacent. They forget those drills. OK, Lloyd, we'll be back with you in a minute to hear some of your own colorful stories from Looking for Lemons, your book about how to survive and thrive on holiday. Uh, after we heard a little tune and we're going to hear from the wonderful Amy Winehouse. They tried to make me go to rehab, I said no. BBC Radio Oxford. Your radio station in Oxfordshire. It certainly is. Before that trail, we had Amy Winehouse and Rehab in the studio with me. We've got Lloyd Figgins, I'm delighted to say. He's written a book called Looking for Lemons, How to Enjoy and Thrive and Survive Abroad and Not Get Yourself Into Any Trouble. Uh, Lloyd, where did it all start for you? You know what, Well, it, it, it started with my older brother, Mike. So he was... Phen- phenomenal older brother in the re- in the respect that you know he he was into protecting me a lot. Okay. However, Mike was a really curious child in the respect that he would always want to know what would happen if. Yeah. And when I came along, you know, I'm sort of eighteen months younger than him. I think he he saw me as a proxy, as something that he could sort of trial different risks with and say, hey, Lloyd, you go off and do that. He saw you as a lab. I think so. Yeah. I think so. So, uh, so yeah, I, I could never never refuse my brother's requests or dares to do particular things. So I think that's really where it started. I wasn't always good at risk mitigation. And alligators? Crocodiles, yeah. Um, in uh, we, we were in Singapore, so when I was eight months old, my father was in the military and, and we got um, posted out to Singapore. Uh, we went to the zoo one day, and um, they had a crocodile in- in- enclosure there. And uh, I-, I escaped. My-, my my parents and my brother sort of turned around to me. So what was happening is the locals used to throw coins at the crocodiles in order to you know, see-, see if they could get them to move. Yeah. And and Mike turned around to him and he said. You know, those coins could make us rich. Yeah, no. uh, so I looked at him. I probably knew something bad was going to happen. He goes, oh, I'd go in and get them myself, you know, but I'm too big to fit through those railings. Oh, no. But you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, to get a long story short, he uh, he, he he persuaded me uh, to, to go in and get these coins. Oh, so, nice. um, you know, the, the crowd gasped. My parents looked, you know, and sort of in unison sort of said, where's Lloyd? Yeah. Um, and then they saw their, their youngest and blondest son, toddling into this this crocodile enclosure two years old yeah so uh, so that's really where it's, it started and, and how do they react uh, yeah they were a little embarrassed and um, you know they had to reclaim this renegade child yeah. as, as their own flesh and blood the croc was dozy uh, a local man actually jumped in and got me out really yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that was that was really the start of it. The the, the family day out was abandoned. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> but it wasn't the yeah, last time yeah. I fell for some of my brother's tricks. So yeah. And then, what is the most dangerous situation you've ever ever found yourself in? I think that there's there's a few actually. Two that are in the book. Um, one was nearly getting kidnapped in the jungles of Colombia in the, in in the late nineties. So was this with the drug cartels and all the rest of it? Well, actually, it was. What uh, were you doing there? It was. I was wrecking a new expedition. So the the Foreign and Commonwealth Office had just changed their advice for certain parts of Colombia that you know it was okay to go and visit with yeah. extreme caution. So what you tend to get is a lot of expedition companies and adventure travel companies. They want 
to be the first ones in there because it's something new to offer their exactly, clients. Yeah, yeah. So they send people like me in there to do a recce to you know find out what routes to take if there's a, there's a jungle trek as it was in this case. Yeah. So I was there uh, with, with a with a colleague of mine and we were going through the jungles. We'd done all our research. Do you speak Spanish? I do speak Spanish. Um, and so we 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 were there with you know a, a couple of the local guides and um, we'd had a fixer in country to make sure everything was safe. We were uh, told that there weren't any rebels in the area. And we were five days into into the foothills of the uh, Sierra Na- Nevada so you were deep. mountains. We were deep. We were yeah. deep. Um, and we we got we were staying in just these tiny communities, really just very remote communities. And we went uh, to the local stream for a, for a wash um, one one afternoon. And by the time we got back, we'd been joined by some other travellers. The only thing was these guys were dressed in combat fatigues and had assault rifles with them right they're colombians uh they, they were colombians and it turns out that uh, they were part of a militia yeah. um who were basically trying to keep the communities in the area safe from people like the farc and the eln yes. and actually the 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 the, the government troops mm. um uh but you know kidnapping those days in colombia was <laughs> still is pretty commonplace yes um and so we yeah you you represented money we absolutely yeah, you know yeah. we were a commodity yeah. so um, so after quite a long evening with them um, and some really awful rum, uh, yeah. they, they decided that they weren't. You're going a to good bloke. Yeah. So you, so you actually, your strategy there was befriending. Yeah, it was. It was what we call humanising. So okay. we, when we when, when we talk about to, to people nowadays about you know how to avoid kidnapping and so on, uh, we talk about humanising yourself to captors or potential captors, and that's really important that they actually see you as a human being and not a commodity. Yes. It's a lot harder to do harm to somebody who you, you you've actually interacted with rather than just seeing them and was the fact else. that you spoke spanish uh, an important part of the reason you weren't kidnapped you know the most important part of that particular thing without ruining too much th- that's in the book was the guy i was traveling with was from manchester right and it was at the time when david beckham was probably at his 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 peak you know yeah, so most famous m- yeah and so they actually, because they wanted to see our passports, because actually they thought we were American to start with. And okay. we thought that, and they asked us if we were CIA or DEA. Yeah. And we thought, well, if they think that, we're pretty much dead anyway. Yeah. Um, so it, we, we got our passports out and the, my friend, he, he, you know, his place of birth was Manchester. Yeah. Uh, and the guy looked at it and he said, Manchester. Yeah. And, and we see, see, see. And he said, Manchester United. And yeah. we were like, see. Sí. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and then he was like, David Beckham. We were like, see. Sí. So, yeah. Oh, really? so, yeah. Beckham so that, saved your life. Back, well, I'd like to like to think he probably had something to do with it. Oh, but um, but that was what broke the ice. Yeah. And, and that's actually what got us into the conversation with them. And one of our guides broke out this bottle of revolting rum. And we sat down and we talked to them. And actually, we found out a lot about them and about the problems of Colombia. And that in itself so it's a, it's a empathy built up. was really, really important yeah. that we actually listened to them and the plight that you know you had families where one brother had joined the colombian army and the other had joined farc yeah um so Off the opposite sides yeah yeah so you know this 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 was going on you know throughout uh, colombia on a massive scale so, um, so just bringing us right up to date and sort of advising um anybody thinking about going to colombia now whether a student or going for a, sort of a, an adventure holiday a good place or a dangerous place you know colombia has changed and um from the time i was there yeah. and i'm pleased to say that colombia is a phenomenal location to go but again same as anywhere you know there, there, there's going to be bad people that would see you the harm come to you yeah. given the opportunity don't give them that opportunity whether that's in Colombia whether it's in Peru whether it's in Vietnam or wherever you're traveling yeah just make sure you've got your wits about you great stuff so looking for lemons Lloyd's book is out now and it is you can get it from Amazon you can get it from Blackwells in Oxford and you've got a website as well yeah so if you go on to lloydfiggins.com and then go to books <laughs> yeah. um, we're running an offer at the moment of course uh, you are up, and, up until Christmas the, offer Christmas offer up until the 16th of December where you can get the book cheaper than you can get it anywhere else and we're paying the posters and packaging so it's a great Christmas stocking filler here we go there we go there's the plug every day is Black Friday in the world of Lloyd Figgins thanks, absolutely Lloyd thanks so much for coming <laughs> my in my pleasure it's a cracky book I have to say looking for lemons uh, as you, you heard how you can get it you heard how cheap and easy it is and lloyd's even going to pay for the postage fantastic stuff and lloyd see you soon